Welcome. In this video, we'll dive deep into the virtual number system, a new and exciting mathematical framework that extends beyond real and complex numbers. Don't worry, we'll break everything down so it's easy to understand. We're going to explore each axiom or rule in this system. So let's start from the beginning and go step by step. The virtual unit J. First, let's talk about the virtual unit, which is represented by the letter J. We define J as the natural logarithm of negative one. Now, you may wonder, what does that even mean? In simple terms, it's a number that doesn't exist in the regular set of real numbers. J is not a real number, and it's also not equal to zero. This unique number J opens the door to the entire virtual number system. Virtual numbers. A virtual number is simply a number made up of two parts. The first part is a regular real number, which we'll call A. The second part is the virtual coefficient, which we'll call B, and it is multiplied by J. So a virtual number looks like this, A plus B times J. Here, A and B are real numbers, and J is the special virtual unit we just defined. This structure forms the basis for virtual numbers. The coefficient rule. Now let's look at the coefficient rule, which tells us how to handle the virtual coefficient B. If B is an integer, meaning a whole number, we apply a rule called modulo two. In simpler terms, if B is an even number, we set it to zero. If B is an odd number, we set it to one. So if B is an integer, we either make it zero or one, depending on whether it's even or odd. If B is not an integer, let's say it's a fraction or a decimal, it stays the same. This rule helps keep things consistent when we perform operations with virtual numbers. Equality of virtual numbers. Let's move on to the concept of equality between virtual numbers. Two virtual numbers are equal if their real parts are equal and their virtual coefficients, after applying the coefficient rule, are also equal. So, if you, if you have two virtual numbers, say V1 and V2, for them to be equal, the real part of V1 must be exactly the same as the real part of V2. Also, the virtual coefficient of V1, after applying the coefficient rule, must match the virtual coefficient of V2. Addition of virtual numbers. Next, let's talk about how to add virtual numbers. When you add two virtual numbers, you add their real components just like you would with normal numbers, but for the virtual coefficients, you add them together first. Then if the sum of the virtual coefficients is an integer, you apply the coefficient rule. If it's not an integer, it stays as it is. So the result is a new virtual number with the summed real part and the processed virtual coefficient. Scalar multiplication. Now let's move on to scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication is when you multiply a virtual number by a regular real number, which we'll call C. When this happens, the real part of the virtual number is multiplied by C, just like regular multiplication but the virtual coefficient of the virtual number is also multiplied by C. If this product turns out to be an integer, we apply the coefficient rule to the result. If it's not an integer, it stays unchanged. Multiplication of virtual numbers. When it comes to multiplying two virtual numbers, the process is a bit more involved. First, we multiply the real parts together. Then we handle the mixed terms, which come from multiplying the real part of one virtual number with the virtual coefficient of the other. These mixed terms are also processed using the coefficient rule. Finally, the virtual unit J raised to the power of two introduces another element in the system. This part is managed based on how J behaves and we follow the rules to keep everything consistent. Closure under addition and multiplication. The virtual number system is closed under both addition and multiplication. This means that no matter how you add two virtual numbers or multiply two virtual numbers together, the result will always be another virtual number. For example, let's consider two virtual numbers, V1 and V2. If we add V1 and V2 together, we get a new virtual number, V3. Similarly, if we multiply V1 by V2, we get another new virtual number, V4. In both cases, whether adding or multiplying, the result stays within the virtual number system, which shows that the system is closed under both operations. Associative property. Let's now look at the associative property, which applies to both addition and multiplication in the virtual number system. For addition, let's say we have three virtual numbers, V1, V2, and V3. The associative property tells us that no matter how we group them when adding, the result will be the same. For example, we can first add V1 and V2 together and then add V3 
or we can first add v2 and v3 together and then add v1. Either way, the sum will be the same. For multiplication, the associative property tells us that the way we group three virtual numbers when multiplying doesn't affect the result. So whether we multiply v1 by v2 first and then multiply by v3, or multiply v2 by v3 first and then multiply by v1, the final result will be the same. Commutative property. Next is the commutative property, which applies to both addition and multiplication. For addition, let's again use two virtual numbers, v1 and v2. Um, the commutative property tells us that the order in which we add the numbers doesn't matter. Whether we add v1 to v2 or v2 to v1, the result will be the same. So v1 plus v2 equals v2 plus v1. For multiplication, the commutative property tells us that the order of multiplication doesn't matter either. Whether we multiply v1 by v2 or v2 by v1, the result will still be the same. Distributive property. This property ensures that multiplication distributes over addition. In simple terms, if you multiply a virtual number by the sum of two other virtual numbers, you get the same result as multiplying the first virtual number by each of the other two and then adding the results together. This helps maintain the consistency of basic mathematical rules within the virtual number system. Powers of virtual unit J. Let's explore the powers of J. When we raise J to any power, the result follows a pattern that is based on the properties of the natural logarithm. The first power of J is just J itself. To calculate higher powers of J, we keep applying the natural logarithm recursively. This creates a structured sequence of powers for J, helping us work with higher exponents of the virtual unit. Exponential property. The exponential property helps connect virtual numbers with the traditional exponential function. When you raise e, the base of natural logarithms to the power of a virtual number, uh, the result is related to negative one raised to the power of the, the previous exponent. This is an important property that extends how we think about exponentiation within the virtual number system. The virtual number system is a fascinating and powerful mathematical framework. Um, it extends traditional number systems with new rules and behaviors, allowing for a richer understanding of mathematics. Each axiom we've discussed today helps create a stable and consistent system that operates within well-defined boundaries. The axioms provide us with tools to handle addition, multiplication, exponentiation, and more, all within this unique system. Thank you for watching. I hope this explanation of the virtual number system has helped you understand its key concepts and operations. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your questions in the comments below. Um, we'll see you in the next video where we explore more about this incredible system.